for his blessings, for his mercy, for the fact that we are alive. Still poor, okay. Every praise is to our God, every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. God my Savior. God my healer, God my deliverer, yes he is, yes he is, God my savior, God my healer, God my deliverer, yes he is, yes he is. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. I don't know if we know this one, but it's it's all about love. It's a simple little song. I guess we probably sang it in for those of us who went to Sunday school or we teach Sunday school or we are a part where if we're Christians. Or if we were so exposed, we may know this song. It's love, it's love, it's love that makes the world go round. It's love, it's love, it's love that makes the world go round. It's love, it's love, it's love that makes the world go round. It's love that makes the world go round. It's you, it's me. It's us who make the world go round. It's you, it's me. It's us who make the world go round. It's you, it's me. It's us who make the world go round. So pass it on to everyone. God's love is free. So pass it on to everyone. God's love is free. So pass it on to everyone. God's love is free. So pass it on to everyone. So pass it on to everyone. And that's the last chorus that I'm going to uh, be singing this evening. And I just like to leave a short passage with us. And it's from St. Matthew 5. And I'll be reading from verse 43 and it reads thus ye have heard it ye have heard that it hath been said thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy but i say unto you love your enemies bless them that curse you do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you that ye may be the children of your father which is in heaven for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust for if ye love them which love you what reward have ye do not even the publicans the same and if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, 
which is in heaven is perfect. I also want to remind us of 1 Corinthians, which encourages us to love, that love is the most excellent way. Um, in these challenging times, we may not find it in our hearts. We may not find it, we may not find it easy to love as we should with all the evil that's happening in the world. But I just like to encourage you to remember that the Lord causes his reign to fall on the just and on the unjust. And if we are going to be children of God, if we're going to be followers of God, we ought to love each and every one. We ought to be kind to one and all. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we give you thanks for this beautiful afternoon. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to see this point in this day. And Lord, as we are gathered here to learn about the food that you've placed in this earth for us to consume, Lord, to know how to, to treat our bodies respectfully, Lord, how to eat in a manner that will give us strength to do your work, to go out into the clinics, into the hospitals, into the world at large, to help those who are needy, those who are malnourished, Father God, to help persons with various illnesses who need special diets. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you'll give us the love that we need in our hearts to minister patiently to these individuals. And Lord, as we are about to go into this meeting, I pray that we will learn new strategies. We will become more acquainted with this field of dietetics and nutrition. And I pray that we'll re remember whatever it is that was disseminated here. I also pray for all the presenters, Lord God, that you will give them the ability to communicate effectively so that everyone will understand and remember the message that they are trying to bring across. I pray for everyone on this platform, Lord, that your love will be extended bountifully to them and that your peace will reign in our hearts and that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, in our lives, both now and forevermore. As we give you all the glory, we give you all the honor, we give you all the praise in no other name but the name of Jesus Christ. I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Can somebody unmute their mics and just say amen? Amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. amen. amen, amen. amen. And I want us at this time, if we see that our classmate is not on the, the seminar, Tell them, say, we're live on YouTube and we are on Zoom. So tell them to come, whatever they're doing, drop it and come. Run, come quick, because good food I give out over here on our Zoom platform. So I now I'm going to ask Miss Alia Williams, uh, another third year student. She'll be doing the introduction of our Master of Ceremonies, our moderator tonight. Um, so she will get you more acquainted with our moderator, Miss Sadika Smith. So I now hand over to Miss Alia Williams as she'll be introducing our moderator. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. So our moderator today is a young lady with a passion for the study of food. The practical application of a scientific understanding of nutrition is the reason she is pursuing a Bachelor of Science degree in Dietetics and Nutrition. She is a second year student at the University of Technology, Jamaica. Sadika is a lover of cooking and exploring new flavors and spices. Her goal is to make the meals we consume the medicine of our lives, but with new flavor combinations. Upon completion of this program, she will also be pursuing entrepreneurial plans in the area of dietetics and nutrition, where she will be opening a nutrition center that jointly aids in feeding homeless or less fortunate young boys or men nutritious meals. Sadika is a loving mother to a handsome young king, Jai Shan Ellis. Now please unmute your mics and give a warm welcome to Sadika Smith. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Woo! Welcome, Dika. 
Hi. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. I'm Sadika, as introduced. And today I'll be your moderator for the remainder of this virtual meeting. Um, it's good to see everybody out. Well, most of us are out. Um, I know it's Sunday and everybody maybe just had their dinner and belly full and well relaxed. So I appreciate you guys coming out to this seminar. And I'll hand you over to Ms. General Stevens, our second vice president, that will be doing our welcome. Janelle, Janil. It seems she got bumped off. I'm not sure. Um, is Janil on? It seems to me that she got bumped off. All right, then. In the meantime, um, just a little icebreaker. Um, I know it's Sunday and everybody has a dinner no or maybe after the meeting but would you like to share with me some of the combinations that you guys normally have on a Sunday for dinner I know some hostel like my hostel normally have two meats I know that's traditional in Jamaica that we have a fish or chicken or pork or something else but you guys can share with everybody else what you'll be having today if that's okay anybody want to participate Lishe said in the chat, rice and peas and pork. Season rice. <laughs> <laughs> season rice, vegetable season rice, fish, chicken, what, which one? With ackee and pork. Oh my. That's a belly full. Anyone else? Oh, barbecue chicken. Some in the chat. Some in the yeah, chat. I'm seeing. I'm seeing in the chat. Barbecue chicken and rice and peas. Rice and peas with fried chicken. So it's tradition. Everybody have rice and peas today. Rice and peas and sweet chicken. Baked chicken and fried fish with mashed potatoes. Yeah. That's Tiffany Miller. She has two meat kinds for her also. also. Another question, guys. Um, is there any myth that you guys would have learned about growing up? Um, I know that you're studying nutrition and you have all grown up and you have found out and realized that that myth, it's really a myth and it was not gospel as your grandma or your mommy would say. It is that you'd like to share. Okay, well, Jan is back. So we're going to go ahead and hand over to her for a welcome. So you can think about that question that I just gave just now. For later, we'll take the answers. All right, Ms. Stevens. Hi, everybody. Are you guys hearing me? Yes, Jan. Yes, Jan, we're hearing you. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. I've been having some technical difficulties. But... All right. So welcome one and all to our first UTAN's personal development seminar for the year 2023. I don't know about you, but I am just excited. Welcome. We have 30 persons logged on. And as I call your name, just, you know, if you want to unmute and say, pa, 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 or something, something, just unmute or send something in the chat. Yeah, bring some life to the party, please. So welcome Miss Abigail Pottinger, Frederica Murray, Liche Hall, Miss Smith, you're the moderator, Miss Chanel Brown, she is one of our presenters Woo! for today. Woot woot. Welcome Alia Williams, you just heard her just now. Anthony Rattry, one of the males in the end, big up a nice clean self. Ashley Watson, Aya Harris, Azaria Ray, Brianna Barton, I hope I'm pronouncing, I'm pronouncing these wonderful names properly. Georgette Adlam, iPhone, who is iPhone? iPhone, you need to rename, that's so common. But he has an iPhone. Janae Plummer, Janelle Duncan, Kadian Fritz, Keisha Morris, big up yourself, Kimona Stevens, 
she stole my last name, big up yourself. Michaela Dukan, uh, Maisha Howell, Nakia Dona, Petula Wall, Rena Harris, Sacquire Williams, Stephanie Allen. Yes, I see you, Petula. Big up one and all, Stephanie. <laughs> Sakoya says, la, 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 Hey, Miss Kitty. Uh, Tiffany Miller, Valise Moore, and how could, forget, yes, Valise, area, mighty rock. <laughs> how could I forget big up to the man himself, Mr. Alex Johnson. He is the pa, pa, president. Pa, pa, pa. <laughs> pa, pa, pa. <laughs> he is the president for the University of Technology Association of Nutrition and Dietetics. Students, if I did not call your name, don't fight me. My love is just the same. Big up and ask me himself. Big up to me too. I am Janiel Stevens and I'm the second vice president for UTANS. I am the person that you guys call in early morning, text late at night, and you know the rest, the stress about the academic issues. But yes, guys, welcome to our seminar. And I do hope that today, oh yes, how could I forget? Uh Big up to all the persons who are watching on YouTube. Big up your nice clean self. I'm not watching on YouTube, so I don't know the name. Just pop your color or, you know, put a pat on your shoulder. Chanel says, big up my nice friend, Janiel, right? So <laughs> and Keisha says, big up, Jan. Yes, guys. Yes, guys, big up on a nice, clean self. So yes, this is our first seminar. We're not just here to look cute. We are here to get what we can get from this event. And we are here to make notes. If you feel like making notes, write down. You must have a little black book as a dietitian and nutrition student. And you make notes of these things. This doesn't happen very frequent. And consider yourself blessed to be having this because I know that some persons don't have the opportunity. I don't think the persons from NCU, they have the opportunity to have seminars like us from UTEC, right? So guys, uh, consider this a blessing. Learn and take what you can get from this session and please participate. No matter come with your big dry self on the platform, participate and listen attentively. Yes. And... If you have any questions, they can send it in the chat. I do hope that you guys have a wonderful session. I'm not seeing any of our guest speakers logged on as yet, but uh, in due time, they will be on. So yes, guys, take care and, you know, hydrate, take and sip a little water if you feel bored. We don't know, take a walk, something, something, but don't stay dry on the platform, please. <laughs> All right, guys, take care, have fun. Thank you, Jan. Appreciate it. Full of vibes as usual. My God, full of energy. Well, as she said, our presenters are not on as yet. So I think I'm going to ask Alex to play some songs for us in the meantime. Um, Shanil is here. Our first oh, Shanil presenter. is here. Okay, good. All right, then, without further ado, we'll have our first presenter of the evening, Miss Shanil Brown, our social media manager for UTANS. Nice, nice, Shanice, as Janice would said. <laughs> so everybody, welcome Shanice. She'll be introduced by Miss Frederica Murray, our assistant secretary. So. Good afternoon, everyone. Are you hearing me? Yes, we are, go ahead. Okay, so welcome to our marketing seminar. I'm truly grateful to welcome our first speaker, Ms. Shaniel Brown. So, Shaniel Brown is a third year dietitian and nutrition student, currently enrolled at the University of Technology, Jamaica. She aspires to become a clinical dietitian specializing in prenatal care nutrition. At her alma mater, the Immaculate Conception High School, she served as the president of the tutoring program and the tourism action club. She also served as a prefect and a member of many clubs, including the Immaculate Conception Environmentalist, Sixth Form Association, ICHS Fitness Club, and many others. She is the immediate past second VP of Youth Hands and spearheaded the initial launch of the Youth Hands Mentorship Program, and now a social media manager. 
She currently serves as a team leader for Kingston and St. Andrew and a youth advocate at WIT and Poor Girls Jamaica. She volunteers at Eve for Life Jamaica, where she helps to empower young Black women. She is now the author and manager of the Sweet Tooth Nutritionist on Instagram. She is a lover of all things nutrition, and she lives by the mantra, never give up, accept failures as a part of success, for with God, you can do anything. So unmute your mics and help me welcome Miss Shanice Brown. Okay, okay, thank you so much, um, Frederica, <laughs> for the introduction. Let me just bring up the PowerPoint and hopefully the internet decides to, you know, behave so I can get through this. Can you see the, can you hear me and can you see the PowerPoint? Yes, we can. Okay, great. All right. Thanks, Alex. Um, so good evening again to everybody. Um, good evening to our moderator, Ms. Smith, the president of UTANS, Mr. Johnson, and our, the rest of the executive and the students of our program, Dietetics and Nutrition. So just like Frederica said, um, I am Chanel Brown, and this evening I'll be speaking to you on creating your personal brand, and I'll be talking a little bit about social media branding and how to get started there. All right, let's get started. Um, just a little reminder, please keep your microphones muted unless um, you're answering a question. Um, if you send something in the chat, I'll try to answer it during, but more than likely be answered at the very end. And I would love for this to be as interactive as possible. So please don't be afraid to leave any comments that you have, raise your hand, ask any questions. I would really appreciate it. And answer the questions when I ask, please. All right. So for your current through most of this, but like she said, I'm Shannon Brown, third year DN student at UTEC. I love all things nutrition and food. One of my favorite things is to just go out find a nice restaurant I've never, that I've never been to and just eat. <laughs> um, I specifically love prenatal care, nutrition and lactation. And apart from nutrition, I love all things social media. I'm always on it. And I love podcasting. Um, I love to volunteer. I really started when I was 15 years old with e Life Jamaica. And I've served as a regular volunteer, as a youth coordinator of the homework program that served um, young children affected by HIV. And I also became the Kingston and St. Andrew team leader for the With and for Girls Jamaica initiative. Um, through e for life I, you know, became exposed to several topics such as gender-based violence, women's rights, and of course, HIV and AIDS. Um, last year, was it last year? Yes, I sat on a panel with With and for Girls International where I spoke about gender-based violence in Jamaica. And just recently, I became the author and manager of the Sweet Tooth Nutritionist on Instagram. So that's a mouthful. Let's get into it. So for the evening, the structure, we're going to be talking about personal brand versus personal branding, the importance of having a personal brand, some tips on building your brand as a student, and I'll be going a little bit into social media branding. All right, so question time. What do you want to be known for? Anybody can answer, you can answer the chat quickly. What is one thing that you would like to be known for? While you talk, while you're raising your hands or typing, I'd want to be known for, um, I want to be that friend who, you know, is always giving sound advice. I want to be known in the future as one of the best prenatal care dietitians. Um, I want to be known as someone who's reliable, someone who you can go to for help whenever you want. Um, I'm waiting on the the person to raise your hands. Anybody hands up? I probably can't see. Alex, what do you want to be known for? I want to be known for my skills in pediatric critical care. And I want to be known as a child of God, somebody that loved the Lord and loved people. Love that. All right, so next one. Um, oh, Frederica, yes, you can go, sorry. Um, I want to be known for one of the best clinical dietitians, whether it be in here in Jamaica or anywhere that I go and further my studies. Right. Um, and Anthony said, making a positive impact on people and Jamaica. Um, 
So the next one, if when someone mentions your name or if you have a business, your business's name, what do you want them to say about you or the business? Um, I'd prefer someone to answer who has a business. Um, Janiel, can I pick on your issue here? Or does Frederica want to okay. answer? Okay. <laughs> can go. So I want my business to be known for its, uh, its growth, uh, the top tier service that it offers, the customer service, just everything that is encapsulated in that. Right. I want it to be known for the nutritive value and not just, you know, the taste of things, but the benefits that we can get. Yeah, quality values, the best quality. And yes, Alia said the way how I treat my customers, customer service. And if you never know, Alia has a business on Instagram. Um, I'm going to shout her out at the end so you can go follow her. So personal branding is not just for the influencers that you see on Instagram or YouTube or just for someone with a business. It is for everyone, including us as students. Stephanie said, my business must be solution oriented and affordable. I love that. Stephanie, please, if you can link your business, everybody can follow you and you know support you. And if you want to impact the world in any way, hopefully it's a positive way, you are definitely in the right place. All right, so personal brand versus personal branding. Now, the difference really lies in the last three letters of personal branding, which um, show that it's a noun, uh, sorry, a verb instead of a noun. Um, the definitions seem pretty long, but they are quite comprehensive of what they are. So a personal brand is a recognized and unique perception of someone based on their experience, competencies, expertise, actions, and or achievements within a community, industry, etc. So it's what people think about you, right? It also can be defined as the living combination of your skills, the experiences, um, and personality that you want your followers to see. Um, again, it is what others say about you, and this is the impression that persons gain, or the impression of the, or the perception that people gain from your online reputation. And on the other hand, we have personal branding, which is, a, which is the conscious and intentional effort. So you're going into it knowing what you're doing, being very intentional, you're not going with you know, closed eyes, you're being very intentional what you're doing. Um, the effort to create and influence public perception. You know, people already have thoughts about you. So you either want to influence it or you want to create some amount of perception about yourself um, by eleva elevating your credibility and dif differentiating yourselves from the competition to advance your career, increase your influence and have a greater impact. Um, it also can be defined as the practice of marketing people and their careers as a brand. And ultimately, it's what you have to say about yourselves. Whatever you think about you, you're going to use that, create, um, use that to create the perception that people will see or the impression that people have about you. All right. So why is it important then? First of all, it sets you apart from the crowd. All of us are going to leave UTEC with our degrees, hopefully, um, with, you know, first class honors and all of that. But you having your personal brand sets you apart from your rest of the, the rest of the cohort, sets you apart from your classmates. It shows people that you're your mean business, especially if you started from now, in your third year, second year, fourth year, first, I said first year, first year, second year, third year, fourth year, whatever year you're in, you started from now, it shows people that you mean business and it sets you apart from the rest of your classmates and your, co your cohort. It leads to opportunities. No, you never truly know who is looking at you. You never truly know who is watching you. And you have to remember that you never really know who is watching you. Um, yes, nutrition might be my passion in life, but you never know. I might be posting stuff on social media that shows that I am interested in social media as a, as, a, as a career or something like that. And you never know, I could get an opportunity to do something. Um, I know someone who... She was us always making videos, talking on Instagram. She's a very good speaker, but she never really marketed herself as a speaker. And through how she posts on Instagram and stuff like that, brands have reached out to her, companies have reached out to her for her to host programs for them. And now she has a side, as a, as a host in university. And the third one is that you, someone is always going to be screening. And especially knowing at the time where social media 
is I think the greatest or the biggest it has ever been. Um, people, your your future employers are looking on your social media pages and accounts to see, do I really want to employ him or do I really want to employ her? Again, you just really and truly never know who is watching. Hope you're hearing and seeing because it says my internet is unstable. So how do you then build your brand as a student? Um, the first thing you want to do or remember is be authentic, be yourself. Before you start thinking about building a brand, stop and think about who you are and what you really want. Whether in the future, your short-term, your long-term goals, stop and think about who you are and what you want. Let your personality shine through your post. Let your personality shine through your post. You cannot be on social media as a blank face. You cannot be on social media with zero personality. Nobody's gonna purchase anything from you. Nobody's gonna follow you. Nobody's gonna want to, you know, nobody's gonna want to, um, say, oh, you know, I follow that girl on Instagram. Let your personality shine through your post. Your personality is the most unique thing to you. Now, one of the things um, that as nutrition experts, yeah, that's right. Um, unlike the lifestyle influencers, and a lifestyle influencer is really somebody who just talks about them life, you know, them vlog, the blogging, really posting about their lives, we don't really run the risk of divulging too much information about ourselves because we are really and truly posting about nutrition. So be um, authentic and let your personality shine through your post. And it came to mind, the only mask that you should be wearing on social media is the one to protect you from COVID. Um, yeah, so just be authentic on social media. Um, ask yourself how you stand out. So in your group of friends, are you the person who's giving advice or are you the person that's going for advice? Are you the motivator? Or are you the person who's always saying, okay, I'm better, are you going for the motivation? Or are you the person who just don't really have a friend group, just always by yourself? Um, you're just always by yourself, you're not really socializing, you don't group work um, and all of that. So find out who you are and how you stand out. What makes you, you, what sets you apart from your friend? What sets you apart from the rest of your classmates? Um, think about your involvement and the things that you're passionate about. I spoke earlier about some of the things that I've done and there's a lot more. I volunteered at several, several pages, um, places, sorry. And when I'm thinking about how I stand out, I'm thinking about things that I've done before that can help to set me apart from my friends and from my classmates. Um, and then think about the things that you're passionate about. And it doesn't have to only be nutrition. It can be things that are personal, such as your faith. Um, Alex would have spoken about his faith. And I know everybody knows that Alex um, is passionate about his faith. Um, not just Alex, but I like to use Alex. Janil as well. Um, so think about the things that you're passionate about. Again, it can be anything. Um, just keep it in line with what's good, you know? And as they can see from the, you call it like a video, um, it's showcasing Paige. And Paige has her, her interest is photography. And so she created a social media and an Instagram page for her photography. Um, so yeah. All right, so think about the skills that you bring to the table. We're not talking about the skills of scrolling on TikTok um, or finding the most relatable memes on Instagram or Janiel's case, she's a serial napper. We're not talking about those um, skills. We're talking about the skills that you can write on your resume. We're talking about hard skills and soft skills. Now your hard skills are things that you have learned you think that you went to school for basically you got some amount of training in such as the data analysis, your design skills and all of that. Um, also, we're talking about your soft skills and those can be considered your people skills, things that you just develop naturally as you grow up, such as communication, adaptability, creativity, all that. Um, 
And I think that one thing I can do also is to ask your friends to help. Nothing is wrong with just sitting around a table or getting on a Zoom call or anything that you can do in this day and age and asking your friends to help you. Each person gets a, ch a, a chance and you write three things about yourself. A friend can write something about you because you just never know what your friends will have to say about you. Things, um, I remember one time Alex said something about me and I wasn't even thinking that that was something that people were, you know, looking or people were seeing, you know? Uh, and that's, I wasn't even thinking that it was a skill actually. It was actually social media. I wasn't even thinking it was a skill, but you know. Start networking. Um, you don't have to tell me, I know. It can be intimidating and it can be scary, but it is the key to growing your professional circle of peers and mentors and superiors. And Alex and other persons can tell, I don't want to pick on Alex so much this evening, but a lot of persons can tell you that's how they know people. That is how they have a wide um, circle of people they can call upon for a favor or people they can just ask for advice or mentorship. Um, one of the only ways I know persons in the health sector is through volunteering. Start by volunteering. Say yes more often. As long as it is in line with your values and your beliefs, nothing is wrong with saying yes. As long as you can get up and you can go and help out, say yes. A lot of times we as people, when I really like the free work, I can attest to that. When I really like the free work, but sometimes it is for the greater good. You never know. These persons can set you on later to getting a job or they can even employ you or you can employ them. So say yes more often. Um, next up, we have curating an online presence. Now, we have several platforms, several platforms. We have the Instagram, we have the Twitter, we have LinkedIn. And just to mention, if you don't have a LinkedIn account, now, by the end of this session or this seminar on a whole, please, please, please go on LinkedIn, sign up, register, and do, do a lot of things that just post not really don't have to post but like just become active on LinkedIn you never know what can come through LinkedIn I'm going to talk about LinkedIn a little bit later but please join LinkedIn and of course TikTok we have Snapchat we have a whole heap of social media platforms clean up your social media platforms I saw something um while I was going through this research for this uh, presentation that said if your grandma can't look at it you shouldn't have it on your platform now um, as I said before, a lot of employers now are really using social media, social media to, to, to find out who to employ. They use it as a part of their recruiting process, you know, a part of their onboarding process, a part of their, um, we call that now, selection process. Um, you can consider starting a new account for your passion or your business. Um, which can be separate and apart from your personal platform. I did that, but it was through my personal platform that I got persons actually come over to my nutrition Instagram, basically. So you can choose to do whatever suits you best, but clean up your social media platforms as best as possible. And I actually have a couple um, pages that you can follow. I have page pixels I mentioned earlier. Um, Seats with Nutritionist. We have the Dietitian Corner, which is Alex, Breeze Pastries and Cater, which is Brianna Ashton, um, Bakeaway Trees, which is one of Michaela's many ventures, Daily Nutribites, Key Fit Nutrition, and Lily Jewels, which is Alia. All right, next up, live by your purse, sorry, live by your online brand. Now, your personal brand is not just the way you present yourselves at events such as these. And this would have seen Sadika in her. I like it, her jacket. Um, it says not just the way you present yourself at events um, or even when networking or on social media. It should be something that you live by every single day. An aspect of living by your personal or your online brand is developing a brand image. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be in jacket and tie and tux and formal shirt and jacket and all that every day. What it means is that you're going to be neat look as professional as possible. And a lot of, a lot of us, when we're going to school, we don't really like to wear the uniform if we don't have to put it on. Put it on, you never know who's watching. A lot of us, like Rihanna, calling you out, um, we like to wear the Crocs to school. 
put on your school shoes. You never know who is watching you. Um, your personal brand is a representation of your professional and your personal journey. So getting into the fun part, social media, building your social media presence. And just disclaim, I am not a professional. Um, I know Alex likes to think that I'm a professional, but I'm really not. I just try, I just read a lot and I just try to follow lots of persons who are, you know, in my same, you know, field. All right, so step one, set SMART goals, S-M-A-R-T goals. Why are you on, so I'm going to pick on somebody. Why are you on social media? Um, Rihanna the Crocs don't fit your uniform, just saying. Who can I ask? Who is on social media? Michaela Dukan. Are you hearing? Why are you on social media? Why are you on Instagram? Okay, Sean, whoa, you really called me out right here. Why am I? Well, my account is deactivated, so I'm not on Instagram. Pick on someone else, Sean. Why were you on Instagram? Well, I don't know, <laughs> for the fun of it, I guess. You know, sometimes I want a little break when school gets to, you know, it's a little escape, it's a little distraction right then and there. Okay, may I ask somebody about business? Um, wait, who have a business? Stephanie, have a business. I saw Stephanie say something about business. Stephanie, if you have a business, why are you on Instagram? Why are you on social media? Why do you have an account? Um, good evening. Um, so my business is not launched as yet, but if it is that, well, I'm on Instagram, but primarily I'm on Instagram for food and makeup. Um, secondarily, um, <laughs> secondarily, it is for networking and just to see how it is that I can put myself out there when it is that the time should come. And also just to see um, consumers feedback and reaction to products and um, information that is posted. Thank you. Vali said to reach my target market. Okay, great. You know why you're on social media? You know why you have an Instagram account? You know the goals that you have should be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound, S-M-A-R-T. Now specific, your goals must be clear. You must have clear goals, they cannot be, be having these big goals. <laughs> um, otherwise, you won't be able to focus your efforts on what you really want to achieve. And you also won't be fully motivated to achieve those goals. Measurable goals must have some amount of measurability. Is that a word? It's a word now. Um, your goals must be able to be measured um, so that your progress can be tracked um, and so that you can stay motivated. Now, looking at the fact, that, you know, my Instagram is growing by 10% every single month. That is the way that I can say, you know, I should probably continue this Instagram to reach more people. I should probably continue this Instagram to advise, well, not really giving advice, but advise more people. Assessing your progress helps you to stay focused, meet your deadlines, and feel the experience of getting closer to achieving your goals. Because if I, if I said that by the end of 2022, I want to grow by 50% and every month I can see myself growing by 5%, I'm going to feel excited when at the end I, am, I get to my 50%, right? Achieve. Now your goals should be realistic. Don't set an outlandish goal that you know you can't achieve because that's going to make you feel don't, that's not gonna allow, that's not gonna make you continue. You know, your goal should be attainable. Stretch your abilities. It should be able to stretch your abilities, you know, make much more, but it should also remain something that is possible and can be achieved. All right. Next up, we have relevant. No, with here we want to ensure that the goal matters to you and that it aligns with your other goals. Right, once not only aligns with the other goals, but also aligns with your beliefs and your values. Um, then we'll jump to time bound. Every goal needs a target date. So if I say I want to go by 50%, when do I want to go by 50%? When? By the end of which one we in now? January, by the end of the year. So that you have a deadline to focus on. So okay, I want to get this goal done by the end of 22. 
and it gives me something to work towards. All right, step two, identify your target audience. Who are you putting out content for? No. For everybody who is going to think, my target audience is everybody. Everybody is not a target audience. Who are you putting all your content for? For me, with my, I saw Alex said Nutrigram, but me and my Nutrigram, I'm really putting it for young people who don't really know persons who are not in our whole profession, young persons, the young at heart, basically, who are in our profession. I want to know more information on nutrition as much as I can um, disseminate without giving too much advice. Um, after you've set your goals, you need to establish a target audience. Figuring out your audience helps you to figure out the following and more. One, which social media sites you're going to be active on. So we know if we're targeting younger persons, we're going to be targeting the Instagram, the TikTok. Uh, we're not going to really go to the Facebook as much. But we know young persons of our age, not really on the Facebook. Um, <laughs> on the Facebook. But if you want to reach older persons, uh, you can go on Facebook and, you know, you can on Twitter. Not really a huge fan of Twitter, but Twitter is young persons as well. A lot of younger persons, a lot of brands on Twitter as well. It can help to figure out posting schedule. Now with posting, you want to ensure that you're posting um, as many times as possible, but you want to post so that you're getting as much engagement as possible. So for me, my aim is to post three times per week. Come on, know young people, when the attention span, as attention span, now that um great or big, we know we have a short attention span. Um, and so I want to ensure that I'm posting as many times as, as possible for the week so that one, I can get as much engagement as possible. When I say engagement, I mean as much persons to view the content, like the content, comment on the content, share the content, and also for them to not become bored and say, oh, a long time she not post, I'm a, you know, unfollow she. Also, it helps to figure out the type of content that you're gonna publish. Um, pictures versus paragraphs. Now, I know that young people are not gonna be reading no long epistle of nothing. Um, I was on Instagram earlier today and I saw something. I wanted to know, but it was too long and I scrolled by. <laughs> so I know how I am and so I'm gonna use that with my own Instagram. I'm, you know, you can mostly use the pictures. They can use um, other forms of posting, you know, your videos and all of that. But just ensure that you know your target audience to know the type of content. Also with videos and stuff like that, we know young persons are not gonna be watching a 30 minute video. Especially with TikTok being such a big thing now, we have the 10 second, 15 second videos. We know that we need to stick within those ranges. Yes, Jenny, infographics. Um, the information on the account, um, right. So, uh, and also the brand's voice, it's how you present yourself on social media, right? The jokes that you give on social media, you want to ensure that, that it's in alignment with your target audience. All right, step three, be human. One of the biggest mistakes a brand can make on social media is to come off as being faceless with zero personality. Now, if I don't, if one thing I hate is to see a big brand, digital, for example, I don't know them does come to mind, or flu, and your, your comment, they, they post something, they comment, your comment, and they can't even respond. They have zero personal, not even look a joke, them can't get. So you know how Wendy's always on Twitter tweeting a bag of foolishness? They have personality and persons will continue to retweet them and go to their stores and buy their food. Say no to automation. We don't want automated responses on social media. That's leave that for the telephone when you're calling them to ask them information. On social media, we don't want the automation. People want to get to know you and or your company on a more personal level. So crack jokes and do not be afraid to have conversations with your friends as long as the jokes are not too far from your beliefs, too far from the scope or the, the feel that you want um, or the type of audience that you're trying to um, attract. Crack the jokes, you know, have conversations with your followers as much as you can. Now, small followers equals more conversations. I'm really aiming to stay small, 
I practice from knowing you only have 10 followers, imagine when you have 100 followers, still going to want to interact with your followers as much as you can. Um, on the screen, we're seeing where Popeye's posted something and, you know, somebody said, well, I think I might get some after work tonight. And Popeye's replied, so you, you know, so like a real person behind the screen. And the person was like, no, you know, I didn't leave work until late and all sorts of stuff. And Popeye's was like, oh, oh we're so how about now? They're promoting their business while still remaining, um, while still keeping their personality on the platform. Um, seek relationships, not just followers. Um, this kind of goes hand in hand with the one before about being human. Quality over quantity. You want to ensure that one, you do have quality posts and you have quality followers on your Instagram. You have persons who are engaging with your brand. It is better to have 100 followers or 10 followers who is engaging with your brand, who is sharing your posts, liking your posts, commenting on your posts, actually buying from you than having 1,000 followers who are not engaging. So some tips, always at the person, say when you're writing back to somebody, don't forget to use their at name. Um, answer questions that people ask. And a lot of times with businesses, especially, persons can be a little bit annoying, especially when you put the thing right in the caption or right in the picture and then ask the same question again. But try as best as possible to answer the questions that people ask and reply when people at you. A lot of times people will share your content and at you or they will see something that might be in your whole scope or in your whole field and they'll ask you so you can see it. Reply. You can comment under their thing and say, Oh, well, thanks for tagging me in this or something like that. And don't just retweet on Twitter or double tap on Instagram or TikTok. Reply with a comment. If somebody says something or tags in something, nobody, nobody just like it or retweet it. Reply with a comment. Remember, it's social media. Don't forget to be social. Um, step number five, plan. All my friends can tell you I am the biggest planner ever. Plan, plan, that's my middle name, Chanel Plan Brown, period. Create an editorial calendar that you can stick to. Now, they have a lot of different things they can use. Um, I know Canva, for example, they have a content creation calendar, but you have to pay for it. It's as simple. You can get a piece of paper. You can print out the calendar for the month and plan all the content that you want to put out. Before I started my Nutrigram, had a whole list of things that I wanted to do. I created all my templates before I started. So when I'm ready, I'm ready for the road. You get me? So create a content that you can stick to. If you know you can post five times for the week, think about it and say, you know, I probably can only post two, three times and you plan that way. Now, this can make the process easier by allowing you to perfect each post. Now, I'm a, I'm a perfectionist. Um, and so planning, it gives me the time to go over and say, okay, I might want to change this font is not so cute today. Yes, last night it was cute, but tonight it's not cute. Um, it helps you to time your post to maximize engagement and it keeps you from constantly posting in real time. And when I say real time, I mean taking a picture now and posting it two seconds later. It also prevents you from repeating the same content and ensuring that each post gets the most attention as possible. Um, next up, we have optimizing your account for engagement. Use the account. Have the account and you're not using it. Use the account. Use your Instagram bio to link promotions, advertise, hashtags. And as I talk about Instagram bios, please go over your Instagram bios and ensure it's, first of all, written properly. All the, all the websites that you want to link, it's there. All the hashtags I want is there. The services that you're offering are there. Please go over the Instagram bio after the session, at the seminar, and ensure that it is written the way how you want it to be written to engage um, your audience. I do have examples here. Um, just a heads up, for Instagram, you only have 150 characters, and that includes letters and spaces. Yeah? Twitter, it's... 160 and TikTok is just 80. So try to include your need and or service. What am I giving to the person? What am I um what is the reason for social for being here? You know, skills and experiences, your hobbies and interests, humor, crack a joke in your bio. Um, again, as 
is in your whole scope and it's um, aligning with your beliefs and values, crack a joke, hashtags, and of course, website links. Um, on here, you can see Michaela has her link tree with all her links there. So anybody can go to one account and find all her business ventures. That is smart. So Alex is trying over as well with his dietitian's corner, Jamaica. But as best as possible, try to ensure that your bios say what you want it to say. All right. Next, get visual. No, with visual, especially when you're looking at young persons who don't in the reading, reading thing, use less words, use more videos and pictures. No, I love to go for um, Jassel Info. Um, that's a page on Instagram, Jamaica It's Support for Life. Because I'm friends with the social media manager, um, but also because their content and the way how they present their content on social media is refreshing. Um, so on here you can see you have Instagram Live, and here you can see just a regular picture. I'm gonna talk about I'm gonna talk about that picture. But Instagram is the best place and TikTok too. I think, um, for using less and more pictures and videos, you have Instagram TV, IGTV. Um, Instagram Live, Instagram Reels, basically at TikTok, um, Instagram Reels, and of course the flat pictures on the on the page itself. You have carousels, which is the one where you have multiple pictures, um, up to ten, I believe. Um, use your team photos and videos. So you times we have team photos there. Um, photos of customers. I know for all that might not be as applicable, um, because we are dealing with persons who might not have information to be known, and so you have to of how we're taking pictures of our customers bringing them to the point of this picture I'm not sure if you can see the thing bring me to the point of this picture so because this company is talking about hiv and stuff like that people don't want them business like that to be out there so when they're taking pictures they take it from the back and that's something that you have to bear in mind too as nutrition professionals take the back from the side where the person's face is showing all of that Photos of events, so things that we do like this if it weren't online, you could post pictures of that. And the scene photos and videos, it makes you more relatable. Code pictures and infographics. Um, one of the things too that you have to try to do is to be creative. I think it comes up a little bit later, but be creative. You don't have to take a picture from Google and post it on your Instagram. Be creative. You have a lot of free, um we call it services on where you can where you get it, where you can, where you can um, get your, your pictures to look as in sorry where you can use those um, platform you know create infographics that is in line with your brand uh, for me my whole brand was around pink I like pink. So all of my, or some of my graphics are going to be pink. So even if I go and go find a picture that I like, I am more than likely not going to use that picture. I'm going to go back to my drawing board, Canva. If you don't have a Canva account, get a Canva account. Canva is the code, period, end of story. I'm going to go back to Canva and I'm going to recreate that my own way, do some more research, add it on, and create a new one for my personal brand. What's next? Pick it back on what's trending. No, this is not, and when I say trending, some things that are trending are not gonna be in line with your brand. Leave those alone, stay away from controversy. No, picking on what's trending is not only to build up the buzz, this is also to show up the brand's See, a lot of persons would have seen this red thing going around on Twitter and on Instagram, even to a, a site. You can use that red flag thing to build um, the buzz um, on your Instagram. Man. This, is a, this is a dietitian in America. She used a red flag in her carousel um, post to, to, to bring, to, to build out the buzz. And a lot of comments, a lot of persons were intrigued she was posting. So also showed her personality as a person too. Um, do not be afraid to pay. I'm gonna finish. I'm gonna be finishing soon to pay. Um, I know for us, you know, school, universities, you don't really have it like that. So because you don't really have it like that, make sure that you're using all the freeness that you can. Please make sure you're using all the freeness that you can. 
social media really and truly is not as as years and years ago. You have to pay to promote your account or your post. On Instagram, they do have paid. Um, you can pay for ads and stuff like that. Um, yeah, you can you can pay for influencer marketing. So be honest, I don't think that's something that really applies to us who will only have maybe like a new program, but for persons who have like businesses, you can pay for influencer marketing. Um, and again, make sure the influencer that you're using is not somebody who is be saying, yeah, to nutrition and to fitness today and then tomorrow in a vlog. They're like, mm, no, you know what I'm saying? Use some tools to monitor your activity. You have a lot of tools, social, HubSpot, Top Influence, or that you can use. Some of them are, you know, need some money, but some of them need money. So Instagram and analytics tools. Register your um your Instagram as a business Instagram, and you can access Instagram analytics so you can track your activity on social media and so you don't treat it like a guessing game. You're not guessing what's happening on your Instagram um, with that. Create content that people actually want to see, especially now. People want to know about nutrition. People want to know about fitness. People want to know about what to eat. No time to be posting all of that. Stand out. You stand out when you're different from others. Create and be original. That goes back to the whole Canva thing. You don't need to go on Google and take up a picture that was already there. If they did walk up on Google, they would have typed everything on Google, but they came to your Instagram. Make your Instagram stand out from the others. Um, try to post content that forces your, your followers to stop and look, you know, um, and just be the silent for the noise that's on social media because social media is very noisy. Right, so that's really the end of social media. Just two last things. Emailing. I am tired of hearing lecturers, especially, complain about students emailing. Guys, please. Emailing is a very big part of your online image your personal brand i never send an email to anybody could i be a lecturer could i be a friend without greeting them hello how are you hope you're doing good and at the end always say something nice we're in covid you can to the right is stay safe continue to stay safe and for christmas time greetings merry christmas oh, happy holidays something like that please ensure that you pay attention to your emailing. You do have your signature line, write signature line, write your name, write a contact number, I rewrite your email, write a quote that you live by. Please ensure that your email is up to par. And again, for the persons who have these outrageous email address, we're getting rid of those in 2022. Your first name, your last name, mail and number, maybe um symbols but that is it at gmail.com now is more than likely going to be the primary way that you're going to be interacting with networking contacts and potential employers so please ensure that from now you start communicating that professional that you will become i just say want to that you will become try as best as possible to answer all emails within 24 hours or as soon as possible and use proper grammar, please. Use proper grammar, spelling, capitalization, and as best as for professional etiquette at all times. Even if you're responding from your phone. I know when you're responding from like iPhone, it was this like self iPhone, delete that. Take that out of it. We don't need to know you're sending from an iPhone. It's fine. But please try as best as possible to ensure that your emails are up. And the last thing. LinkedIn. Join and use LinkedIn at the end of this session to see other persons popping up in my circles for persons to add to my circle. Sorry. Join and use LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the largest professional social. I was speaking to myself also because I do have an account, but I don't use it as much as I should. You know who is going to employ you from LinkedIn and through courses that you take. Um, learned how useful LinkedIn can be um, in getting a job, finding a job, even posting job openings. You never know. Join and use LinkedIn. Post a nice professional picture of your a tech one in your uniform shirt with your everything and post it on LinkedIn. Join LinkedIn. You can connect by 
um, share your, your LinkedIn with your email contacts and persons will add you back and all of that. And you can join groups from your universe and all of that, um, which will help you to build connections and visibility. But that is the very end. So I do hope that everybody learned something. I think I was talking a little bit fast, but I do hope you, know, you at least get a little something. If it's even for you to just know how to go on LinkedIn, join it and use it and email properly, please. Please, 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 please. Um, so I really do hope that you enjoyed this. I'm gonna look at the chat now. Okay. Janine is on LinkedIn. So I hope everybody heard and it made sense. Please, I really hope it made sense. Things have charged. And um, <laughs> if you have any questions, you can ask. I hope it's as clear as possible, though. Same, Sadiqa. All when me I look at my updates, it's true. True, 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 true. Jenny. Oh, thank you, Jenny and Janiel and Leche Anthony. Thank you. Jenny, my needs updating to. Janiel joined LinkedIn. Praise God. Um, she loves love Canva. Listen, Canva is my best friend. You can ask Alice. Alex, Alice. You can ask Alex or Daniel or Rihanna. Canva is my best friend. Um, yes. And again, Rihanna trucks really don't fit a uniform. <laughs> but this is it from me, guys? Um, yeah, so that is it from me. Handing back over to Sadika. I don't say questions, but yeah. Thank you very much, Shan. That was awesome. I really enjoyed it. I learned a lot. As I said before in the chat, I only update my LinkedIn profile when I'm looking to work. <laughs> Brand new photo, everything go up, but it needs updating. I'll take away from your presentation that, that I need to do. I also have a business on IG that I really don't pay attention to because all the traffic goes through WhatsApp. I need to go back over there and do that. So thank you very much for your presentation. I hope we all learned something from that right there. Next presenter we have coming up is on our schedule is Mr. Kurt Bolton, but for unforeseen reasons, he's not here with us today. So Mr. Alex will be doing the presentation on how to create your hand, your brand, how to, how to find your niche in the world of nutrition and Miss Lachey or second VP or first VP actually sorry will be introducing Alex she's a second year student just the same like myself go Lachey Good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening. So I'm excited to introduce our second presenter for this evening. Why am I excited? It's owing to the fact that this talk is very relevant to all of us. It will be centered around finding your niche in a world of nutrition. So just a brief background on Alex Johnson. A man of faith and medicine is a great way to describe Mr. Alex Johnson, who is currently a student at the University of Technology, Jamaica, where he is pursuing a Bachelor of Science degree in Dietetics and Nutrition. Mr. Johnson serves as the president of the University of Technology Association of Dietetics and Nutrition Students, UTANS. He also serves in the capacity of program representative and is an active member of the Jamaica Association of Professionals in Nutrition and Dietetics, JAPINAD. Mr. Johnson's goal is to become a pediatric critical care dietitian in the near future. Mr. Johnson is also a trained phlebotomist and active researcher in the field of nutrition. He is also an American Heart Association certified basic life support practitioner, trained in CPR and life support skills. Mr. Johnson is currently an ambassador with the Heart Foundation of Jamaica and is an advocate for correct food labeling and an adequate, with adequate warning labels. He currently worships at the Faith Chapel of Faith Apostolic Ministries under the leadership of Bishop Garfield Daly. He was baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost for 13 years now. His mantra is Joshua 1 verse 9. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. 
Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So without further ado, let's give a virtual applause and welcome Mr. Alex Johnson. Oh, Lord Jesus. Lishé, oh my <laughs> God. My friend. Every time, thank you, John and all. A friend of mine wrote that, um, <clears throat> that profile for me, Mr. Dunkley, and I tell you, every time it is read, me yai, me yai, full up of water. Janila did not steal her mantra. We just share the same mantra, monkey face. So good evening, everybody. I know it's not supposed to be me who is doing the presentation, but Mr. Kirk is, unfortunately, COVID is involved in his life right now, and he's unable to do the presentation at this time. And we all know Mr. Bolton is one that is a, fan and a lover of of UTEC and all things UTANs. So we are, you know, just sorry for him not being able. And also he is he works at a he's a nutrition manager for a nursing home. And quite a number of the nursing the residents are down with COVID. So let us remember him in our prayers at this time. But the show must go on and I won't say that I'm the best person to do this presentation, but I believe I found my niche and I believe that I can bring some guidance to everybody this afternoon. So bear with me. So first, I'm going to share a video with you all, and then we are going to get into our presentation. Disclaimer, guys, I don't have no PowerPoint as pretty as Chanel's, or will I ever be able to make a PowerPoint so beautiful? So I am just letting you know that I will be just, I won't be winging it because I'm always prepared, but I have um, something lovely to share with you all today. So I hope that we will all benefit. This is a very critical area. Um, I'm so, I don't even know if I should say anymore. I think Shanil just did an awesome job a while ago and I'm still starstruck and I'm a bit nervous because of, that you know that was a presentation so let me see if i can do any justice to such a big topic so let me share the video are you guys seeing my screen yes we are They say you are what you eat, and our next career knows that better than anyone. Today, we're talking to a dietitian. Courtney? Hi, Brian. Welcome to Prince George. Thanks for having me. Let me show you around. Great. My name is Courtney Hobson. I'm a clinical dietitian at the University Hospital of Northern BC in Prince George. Dietitians are nutrition experts who ensure that people have the nutritional information and the right foods available to meet their nutritional needs. They help people figure out what their nutritional needs are based off of medical diagnosis they have or just their age and gender and help them to meet nutritional goals that they might have for themselves. There's three general areas, clinical, which would be with inpatients or clients, community, which would be working out in the community, but usually working on policies for health authorities, and also in food service administration, so working in a kitchen, in a long-term care facility, or in a hospital. So your role could be a lot different in different types of dietitian positions. Most dietitian work is Monday to Friday, normal work hours. It's not usually shift work. An average day would involve screening the patients on my unit to see who's at nutritional risk and then prioritizing those patients and doing nutrition assessments on the ones who are at highest nutritional risk and from there coming up with a care plan that would meet their nutritional needs in hospital and then also when they are discharged home from hospital. Okay, hop on the scale now. Okay. Okay, so that's my weight there? Yeah. Okay. And we use that as a part of our nutrition assessment on everybody. We'll take their height and weight, do their BMI, and it's just one tool that we have to 
figure out how healthy they are in terms of their nutritional status. Okay. It doesn't tell us everything, but it gives us a bit of an idea. You definitely need to be creative as a dietitian. You have to work with different clients who have all sorts of different needs. They might have financial barriers or religious barriers or different diet restrictions based on the medical conditions that they have, specifically what's important for an individual patient. You need to be able to look at the details um, for that patient of their diseases, the medications they're on, all that sort of thing. So your BMI, your body mass index, works out to 24.7. We want it between 18.5 to 24.9 for somebody your age. Um, so you're in that range, so you're healthy BMI-wise. So I don't have to change anything, perfect. People can always tweak things in their diet to make it a bit healthier. You don't need to get really restrictive about it, but there's always things that people can do just to eat a bit healthier, and that's where dietitians can be helpful, finding that balance for people. There's a lot of calculations that you do on a daily basis. When we're determining calories that a patient would need, there's different equations that we use to determine caloric needs, and there's also a pretty strong science connection with physiology and the connection between food and your body and science. To be a dietitian, you have to have completed a bachelor's degree in nutritional science or dietetics, four years of undergraduate courses at a university, and then a 10-month to a year internship. The dietetic internship is really important in terms of gaining those practical skills. Now, breaking down each of these food groups, you would have to know a little bit about each of them, about what they're worth as far as calorie counts, how much sugars, fatty acids, things like that are all contained within each. Is that something that you learn strictly through university? Yeah, so initially you learn sort of general nutrition and food science and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then as you get on in third and fourth year, you're learning more about therapeutic diets and how they relate to disease conditions. An important skill is to be able to talk with people that you've just met. You have to be pretty convincing sometimes to get patients to understand the role nutrition and their diet can play in their disease state, providing the foods that will help slow the progression of that disease or minimize consequences that could come about because of the disease. And you have to be able to build rapport with them and be able to do a teaching with them or have them feel comfortable to answer your questions. But that's one of the benefits is that you could start out as a clinical dietitian and then you could move into the community or you could move into food service. So you have the background training to work in any of those fields. But there is room to move up either to be a chief dietitian of a department or even beyond that you could move into management and other levels of the healthcare system. When you're able to do a teaching and they come back and say that, oh yeah, this is really working for me, and then you're able to take further steps with them, just seeing those successes in clients or in patients' lives is one of the real rewards. Okay, so that was an apple a day. Yeah. Got it. Thank you very much, Courtney. I had a great day. See you later. And once again, I'm Brian for Career Trek, reminding you that this career could be yours. See you next time. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I share this video because this was a video that really encouraged me or it solidified my decisions in becoming a dietitian and you know it's really exciting to see and it it's a reason why i used an american per uh, american video not that i love america or anything i know on youtube and they may shut us down become a seminar me personally i love america but it's because of the example of a first world healthcare system and where nutrition can bring you and where nutrition is going to take you. So bear with me. I hope I don't sound like a preacher, but that is what I do best. So I'm going to try my best to just go through our presentation quickly. And if you have any questions, please to write them down so that we can have them at the end. So a niche can be defined as a comfortable or suitable position in life or employment. So for example, you can say he's now a partner at a leading law firm and he feels he has found his niche. So finding your niche is really finding where you believe you belong, finding where you believe that you 
are best able to make an impact. Now, make an impact, that, that's such a big statement. What, what do I mean by making an impact? Well, if I'm going to be a dietitian, I must make an impact. If I'm going to be a janitor, I must make an impact. If I'm going to be a lawyer, a nurse, a teacher, I must make an impact. The whole reality of us finding our niche is not just finding our niche for finding our niche sake and working for uh, working sake, but our responsibilities as dietitians and nutritionists is to be passionate about what we are doing. And when we are passionate about what we are doing, others will know respect our craft. They will now understand that, listen to me, I'm not a kitchen staff, I'm not a chef, and all the other things that they will call us. Sometimes they go even as worse to say that, you know, we are cooks, and you know, cooks are untrained people. You don't have to have no certification or not to be a cook. And you would have heard the dietitian on the video sharing the rigorous training, one 10 months to one year worth of internship. That is a lot that same equivalent to a doctor and um, in terms of internship and practice and four years, many of us will go on to do our master's degree. We're gonna be in school more than a lot of professionals that you work with. And we're gonna have a lot more training because we are now able to bridge a gap between medicine and nutrition. It, we know that dietetics in the clinical setting is a merge between medical training and and um and nutrition training so you marry the both of them and get medical nutritional therapy and that's what we practice as clinical dietitians so i want to say to us i am a lover of food and sports for example i love to work with athletes I love to work with persons doing physical training. I, I like to maximize people's potential in their area. What area is best for me? Somebody can unmute their mic and, and, and tell us what area you think would be best for that person in nutrition. I'm not hearing you. Sports, Sports. nutrition. Sports, nutrition, very good. So. Um, I, I, frighten, I never hear Rihanna burst the mic open and just shout that one because I know Rihanna is the sports nutritionist of the end, the future sports nutritionist for Jamaica, and she'll be an international sports nutritionist. So we're, everywhere we go, we're going to be hearing the name Rihanna Harris, Dr. Rihanna Harris. And we're going to be saying, oh, but wasn't she the secretary of, of UTAN at one point? Yes, yeah, so we're going to hear that name all over the place. And we're going to hear Victoria Brown and Ali and all those sports nutrition people. We're going to be hearing their names all over the place. So finding my niche, I would have found where I think I'll fit in comfortable. So I per se may not have found my niche, but I am preparing myself to be in a place where I am able to transition when it's time. So you cannot be sitting in the program, you don't know nothing about the future, you don't know what you're gonna be doing, all you have on your mind is to hurry up and pass Gen Chem so you can move through the process and just get rid of the school. No, we are not gonna have, we are not gonna have um, excellent dietitians and nutritionists like this. What we're going to have, we're going to have a bunch of people who just going to work because they need money to survive. And we have to understand that we are in a field where we are providing health care. We can kill the patient. Listen to me. It is um, we were in a lecture with Miss Simpson and she was talking, no, Mr. Perry, and they were, he was sharing an experience and the death of the patient could have been attributed to nutrition it was attributed to nutrition, but it wasn't the nutrition department's fault. Guys, take your roles, take your jobs, take your, your craft as something important and needed. You are not there because, oh, the hospital, the hospital cannot function without a dietary department. Yes, if you didn't know that, a couple of years ago, they had a strike at Boston Manti Children's Hospital. And they had to call the army to operate the kitchen because the, the, nothing could have operated without the, the, the dietary, the dietetics department in full swing. 
that is how important you are as a professional. So your role and your responsibility is not one that is not needed. You are a specialist. Let us get it in our heads from now. You are a consultant. You are a specialist. You are called on the wards by referral. You are called by a school by referral. You are called by an athlete by referral. You are, you are a specialist. So first, you need to put that in your lemonade glass and drink it. We are specialists. So we are no ordinary persons. We are specialists. And if you, don't, if, if you are not recognized as a specialist, you need to tell yourself, and when you begin to tell yourself and begin to operate as a specialist, then you will understand what it is, what your role and responsibility is. So just to prick you, what's the cost to see a dietitian now? The price can range from $5,000 to $25,000. I hope you heard me. The price to see a dietitian or nutritionist in a private setting or, yes, private settings, I've checked it out recently, if you don't believe me, it can range from $5,000 to $25,000. So you are paying the price of a specialist to see a specialist. You're paying the, the specialist rate. But some of us, we don't appreciate our roles and our responsibilities. We just feel as if, oh, so I don't know why I do that program and I waste my time. You have to create your own environment. You have to create an environment that is going to become conducive to your practice. So Chanel has already found her niche. She knows that she wants to go into a direction of prenatal care and lactation. So Chanel is going to position herself in such a way that doors and all the possibilities can be opened up. I don't know who in here don't know that Janil wants to be a public health nutritionist. She, she preaches it. She rings it out. And even in classes when she hear, hears her specialty being spoken about, she gets all excited because Janil now would have created her niche and she would have set herself in a way that, oh, I am going to be a public health nutritionist. So Janil is now po positioning herself into the direction of a public health nutritionist. Everybody knows Rihanna wants to be a sports nutritionist because she positions herself in that direction. So any area that you find that you are interested in, do not be afraid to position yourself in that field. Don't be afraid to volunteer. Don't be afraid to go out and, and get acquainted with the person. So I want to be a pediatric critical care dietitian. I'm going to know all the pediatricians around. I'm going to know all the pediatric specialists, whether they are pediatric pulmonologists, pediatric bariatric surgeon, whatever area of pediatrics that I can find, midwives, public health nurses. I'm going to get myself acquainted with all the persons who deal with my area so that when possibilities and, and doors are being opened for me, I can make myself available. So don't say, oh, I am not ready. I can't do this. I can't do that. I don't have time. You have to put yourself out there. You have to position yourself. I have to create the niche for yourself. Nobody is going to create the niche for you. Nobody is going to come and hand a bunch of people's numbers in your hand, a bunch of people's emails. You have to go out there and meet people. I have over 900 ad contacts, and I can tell you that, no, I think it's 1,000 something. Yeah, it, it gone up. But I have over 1,000 contacts, and at least 100 persons in my contacts are related to medical Care, healthcare. If I put DR in my phone, I can have to scroll through the amount of doctors that I have in my phone. Because what did I do? I put myself in a space now that I am able to network and to get to know these people. So now I would have experience so that I know if I'm having a problem, I can call on this person, call on that person. Even times I have doctors that call me and say, Johnson, what do you think about this? The patient has so and so and so. What you would do as a, from your nutrition standpoint, put yourself out there. I remember Miss Simpson sharing in class one day. She went down to an accident and emergency and she told the senior doctor that nutrition is able to assist them with seeing some of the patients. And Ms. Simpson said that she had to ask them to ease down with the amount of patients that were coming. So many of us, when we go into our positions as RDs, RDNs, 
public health nutritionist, sports nutritionist, diet, school nutritionist, whatever area we may go into. We have to now understand that we cannot expect things to be handed to us because really and truly our profession is a fairly new one. So we now have to go out there. We have to let the world know that, listen, I am a dietitian and I'm proud to be one. And you have to make them know why you are proud. So you can't say that you're a DN student, one of the best programs in the College of Health Sciences, and you never yet have a proper uniform. I mean, I talk about cracks and so that's subjective. I'm talking about carrying yourself properly. You always look slack and untidy, your head not comb, your, your, your uniform not iron, you, you, you just don't look attractive in the sense that you don't, people see me on the road and stop me because of how I look in my uniform. They say, what do you study, medicine or so? And I get the opportunity to tell them. So some of us are, 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 um, are out there, we don't understand ourselves as dietitians, we don't know what we are doing, we don't know what we are. So your responsibility, I'm giving everybody some homework. You're going to go and you're going to research as much as you can what is dietetics and nutrition. It's not too late because many of you now are in the, the field and you don't know no area that you want to go. I talk to some of you, you don't know nothing. You, you, you don't know what is the next step. You just have go through the processes. And if we continue to do this, we're going to be in serious problem. So it seems rather simple, you know, at the first glance, but a career in diet and nutrition is far more complex and multifaceted than the first I meet. So everybody knows that by now. I don't even have to explain that to none of our DN students. But if you have anybody here who is listening and you know want to get, get acquainted, our dietetics and nutrition program is an extensive one. So nutrition is a science that investigates the metabolic and physiological response of the body to food and diet and the role nutrients in the cause, treatment, and prevention of disease. Very important. So in layman terms, this means that the professionals in dietetics and nutrition do more than just push fruits and vegetables. Our understanding of our relationship between diet Health and disease allows us to teach, counsel, treat people on healthy food selection, food preparations, and good eating habits. So a career in nutrition will allow you to serve as a credible expert. You're going to be a guru in your field. You're going to be the person in your field who everybody will come to. So nobody don't, no longer will go to Google I no longer go to YouTube for any information. They are going to come to you because you are now going to position yourself in a way that persons will understand that I, there goes a dietitian and a nutritionist. So we know you have different titles. You have RD, you have RDN, you have public health nutritionist, PHN not. That, that is one, um, different, different areas. But registered dietitians hold a bachelor's degree at minimum, and oftentimes, majority dietitians that I know, they have a degree in, a master's degree in nutrition. So there's some specialties I want to leave with you. You have sports nutritionists, you have health coach, you have holistic nutritionists, you have clinical dietitian, and the list is so extensive for a clinical dietitian. We have public health nutritionists, we have food safety auditor, we have oncology nutritionists, we have nutritional therapists, we have personal nutritionists, you have corporate wellness consultant, you have college nutritionists, pediatric nutritionists and dietitians, you have nutritional therapists, nutrition therapists, you have nutrition educators, you have exercise, um, exercise science coaches or, or, or sports um, specialists, you have life coaches, you have veterinary nutritionists, and you have eating order nutritionists. Their list, this list is not even exhaust. I can't even read everything because it's so long. But settings in food and nutrition careers can be in, in, including schools, hospitals, and other medical facilities like where Mr. Bolton works. He works in a long-term care facility where they house um, um, elderly patients. So guys, don't just look at the hospital. 
don't just look at the clinic. But there are so much areas that you can go. You have community specialists. You have dietitians that now work within the communities. They work in the children's homes. They work in the long-term care facilities. Guys, the, the world is our oyster. And it is our responsibility to understand that we have to put ourselves out there. Create our own niche, create our own community, create our own space so that we understand that going forward, we are specialists. We are all specialists and we are called to do the best we can because we are dietitians and we are nutritionist professionals. All right, guys. So thank you for listening and hearing me out for the couple of minutes. I hope you learned something from my presentation and I hope that somebody was empowered and you understood about how to put yourself forward. So let me take the question. Stephanie, has a, have a question. Good evening again, um, Alex. Good evening. Um, just a point of information. Um, recently, when I was at my workplace, my coworker said to me, because she asked me about my career or what I was studying. And her remark was like, what's the need of a dietitian? Um, and she had the audacity to say that, you know, they don't need a dietitian because they can always, if she wants to eat healthy. Well, her remark was that Jamaica doesn't need a dietitian because, you know, they can always go on Google and type in what, type in what to eat and, and all these things. But I pardon her ignorance because yes. she obviously does not, you know, does not know. And I was going to get a bit emotional when I was talking to her, but I reserve my feelings because I know that she's ignorant accordingly. And it's just a case, as you say, about making that niche, you know, creating that space for ourselves because it is a fact that we are needed because if a person goes to Google and type in what to eat, Google is a general platform. It's yes. not it, it's not catered to a particular person. Google Google doesn't know your BMI like a dietitian should, right? So I'm just saying this to say that the space is there for us and um, we must create it. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Janiel, I see your hand up. And just to add to that, Stephanie, uh, people don't Google their prescriptions or Thank you. when they're sick, they don't run to Google for Google prescribe something for them. They don't. They go to the doctor. So why do you want to run to Google when you have a nutri nutritional related disease? Yesterday I had an experience. I was in a taxi and this lady, all of a sudden she just started talking to me, Jamaicans, right? And she said to me, uh, I can't afford to go to the nutritionist because it is too expensive. And so I went, I am going to the, the public one that they offer in Spanish Town Health Center. Right. So when I asked her how much money the nutritionist charge, she said that it's a little link she gets. So is our friend link her up with the nutritionist and she got um, the consultation for four, she got um, it for four thousand five hundred dollars links she get so you can imagine if she did not get any links roughly she would be, pay, she'd be paying six thousand dollars seven the price you know the price varies and i was i was rather impressed to know that even though she could not afford to go to a private dietitian she went to the clinic to seek help you know that was that yeah. was really a high moment moment and it shows that no more than ever people are knowing about us and we need to be there. We need to sh put ourselves out there. Some of we act like we're too much total. So when we go out there in the workplace, we allow people to just step on us and um, play some stupid remarks, some ridiculous remarks, and we don't address it properly. We need. We are the future of the end. And if you go out there as a total, it is re it is reflecting Alex. Everybody from you take everybody from you can. Because they're going to say, them dietitian students that don't, they don't want nothing. So that is why we have to take a stand. We have to be, you know, be passionate about what you're doing. Nobody can tell me, say, I'm um, being a foolishness. That is just 
oh, that is just not arguable. Don't come to me with that foolishness. We need to be passionate about what we're doing and take a stand, know who we are and act as such. And stop. some of us are too shy, shy, and uh, we need to engage ourselves. We go out there, do not be afraid to engage yourself, yourself in conversation. If you're in the taxi and you hear somebody talking about rubbish, it is fine for you to clear up the misconception because people are out there and they're hungry for the right news. Yep. And so that is why they tend to they tend to gravitate to the foolishness and the garbage that the um, um, fitness trainers and all of them foolishness. They're no offense. All of that information that they're putting out there, people are more quicker to gravitate towards it because they want something that, you know, can help them in one go. Whilst we are here, we studied four years, such so many years of DN, and we are here bottling up the information. We are not making use of opportunity. If it means that you can go and take a little volunteer to do a talk at the clinic, volunteer to do a talk at your church, something. Cancer we come up, volunteer to do something. Go out there and let nutrition be known and pave your way. All right, that's it. You see, the DNA has a lot of preachers in us, so don't get us started. I see Chanel has her hand up, so Chanel can go. All right. Um, I kind of forgot my point, but I think um, what's her name again? Hold on. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. I think Stephanie was saying something about nutrition, this whole um, area being new. Um, just to share something I saw um, during the summer of last year, I went to a seminar that said that by 2025, this dietetics and nutrition sector will be worth $465 billion. Guys, we're not in a, in a, in a, in a, in one of those sectors that are uh, that, that's already established nutrition changes every single day i think um i heard dr barra said that sometime this past week nutrition changes every single day and just like how you say med students can specialize in this one only for specialties and all sorts of things um areas we can do the same and just like alex said it is very important that we don't just or you can finish the degree and or you can say, we want to finish gen chem or we want to finish biochem because it's so hard. Yeah, we well, know it's hard, but make sure you're getting as much as you can from it. Um, so when you go up there, as Janiel always says, we don't look at no total. Um, don't hurry up and finish the program. Take your time, go through it. So when you finish, you're well equipped to go out there and do what you have to do. Re research, as Alex said, do as much research as possible. Anybody in third year know that still don't know what they want at all? That's a problem because we are doing all different aspects of nutrition now. We're doing the community, we're doing the clinical, we're doing the sports. So at least by the end of third year, second semester, you must know what you want to do um, and where you want to go. Hopefully before then, but do your research. There are a lot of different areas they can specialize in, not just the pediatric, not just the renal, not just the cardiology, not just the gerontology, not just um, community and all of that. There are a lot of um, areas they can specialize in. And for persons like me who love the social media, you can go to social media influencing. Trust me, it's better to have trained persons out there who, is, who are doing it than for you to leave it up to these lifestyle influencers who don't know one thing we talk about. I tell people not to eat. For example, I'm um, gluten because it's hell not to. So just um, research as much as possible. And as Alex said, try your hardest to find in, in this dynamic industry. I am happy that those sentiments were shared. It has anchored my points and strengthened my points. And I just want to say to you, you can do it. We can do this. Um, I want everybody to put that in the chat or unmute your mic and say, we can do this. Everybody, we can do this. We can do this. We can, yes. we can do, do this. this. Yes, can yes, this. yes. I can, can do, do this. this. We That's can do right. this. That's right. So we all can do this. We're just going to have to put our heads together, work with each other, 
and I promise you we can do this. Have a good evening, everyone. I now hand over to Ms. Smith, Sadika Smith, our well-abled moderator. Hi, everybody again. Thank you very much, Alex. That was really an informative session. Um, I know a lot of us struggle with that main thing that you're saying. We're unsure as to what area we want to settle in and branch off. We tend to change our mind 10 million times. Well, me, my, well my, for me, myself, I would like to settle in food service, rare as I was told, weird as, as I was told, but I have my passion, I have my reasons. Um, so, but we'll take a five minute stretch break because my known tired and we don't just want to get up, walk, drink some juice, finish a series in a five minutes, prepare it, come back, eat some dinner, catch some ice cream, and then we'll resume at 7.03, based on my time. So, that's it, everybody. We'll have our third speaker at that time and then our closing prior. So we're, we're moving right along, you know, get everything going. Alrighty, so I'll see you guys in five minutes time. Some things are just never said, no Story of my life, ordinary person just like you If you take a look inside, you see the great things that people do Changing lives day and night Nothing I do ever makes the news Still I have to do what's right To the king of all kings, all praise is due Yesterday I was on a train A little boy asked me my name He said, sir, I've seen you before Tell me who are you? Said I am a legend That you never heard of before I said I am a lion But he never heard me roar I am a hero that nobody celebrates But if one person remembers my name That means I've made a change I'm the man who cooks the food And feeds the street people in the afternoon I'm the lady with the broom Sweeping the halls of your son's preschool I'm the soldier who's up all night Making sure everything's alright And if you ask me, I'm quite fine Being an ordinary person, doing what's right Yesterday at the football game A little girl asked me my name She said, sir, I've seen you before Tell me, who are you? I said, I am a legend That you never heard of before I said, I am a lion But you never heard me go Hero that nobody oh, celebrates. Hey, follow me now, you see ya now. Hey, you upset, sir. See you upset, sir. I'm a winner. You know the dark. Right now, cause 
Cause you're in it right now, yeah I'm with you I'm with you I'm with you Hey, watch out now Hey, I'm a walking W Learn from the ends To the men I made all in a show for them bells Every day you see me with the pan on next film Break records like we crack in eggshells And every single ounce of effort we expel It's all about the risk and we have to excel I watch them looking like sources we dress well Boop. Another knock out for the ring the next spell I'm about to set my ear cause I can't to get well Cause I'm sick of it Ah, I'm so sick of it But that's the only gist of it I hate it not the beauty when we didn't know we have it Cause I'm I'm winning I'm winning I'm winning Oh, oh we're winning right now, you be I say we're winning right now Me forget that show up into what we're living right now Cause we Cause I'm winning right now, yeah And I'm chilling right now, cause we, oh, we're winning right now. I thanks giving right now, yeah. I said we're winning right now. So every day you see me, we are the reigning champ. And I the cloud with the silver line, we reigning from. Cause if you see some of the places where we're ailing from, it's just the type of place we should be failing from. But now we're winning. Yes, every part of every inning. Pull the for tracks and then I fell to for swimming. Uh. You know that there's no giving in, no matter the circumstances we're living in, you hear me? I'm winning, I'm winning, I'm winning. Some cry, some smile, some fight every day. We rise to the top. Cause we know what it takes Through it all we survive Yet still hold the faith Unchangeable Lord, unchangeable hey. No matter how the dollar might stack up Me still not change me, I go stay rough In a diggity and your offy buckle up your lace Be smart, don't be a cruff, no, no Life it's a journey, it's a long race Mama says son be wise and don't bring disgrace So me take up the broom and start sweep the place Cause all these ways they got to get erased I love to me people that me embrace The truth are the truth and I can't erase So hell to all of those who want hate Just send me to finish this race So we ain't giving up now We put up a fight
stare at the sun. I know it is a blessing. Yeah. Lift up my eyes to this unblessed old man. Sometimes I'm lost and far from home, but I'll find my way. Everybody's back. Every morning, 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 such an informative session with you guys. Always good. You can always put on the best meetings. You know, I like how we're very active. I think I was really in the right place when I decided to do this program, honestly, because you guys get us all involved. That we don't just feel like we're going to school and just doing a degree and then just being thrown out into the world to fend for ourselves. You guys are preparing us mentally. Um, not just academically to go out there and be our best person we can be. So our third presenter will be introduced by Miss Paige Gibson. He's Mr. Michael Mirage, consultant financial management specialist and after that we'll have our closing prior remarks because I know someone might be gearing and ready to go off leave us in the Sunday night here. So without further ado, Ms. Paige Gibson. All right, there is some technical difficulties. Um, Mr. Mr. Maraj is not here as yet, but we have a public service announcement. We have our UTANS banquet, which is right around the corner. I'm inviting everyone to come out to that or UTAN's award ceremony co and cocktail, which is set for March 26, 2022. And that's set to be at the Strand Castle Gardens in Stony Hill. Guys, please go and Google Strand Castle. It is beautiful. It's just $4,000 and all the proceeds will go in aid, in aid of our UTAN's outreach program. And also this year we are planning to do a grant won't tell you how much money it is as yet. Just know say it's a good amount of money that it can help you with a lot of little things. So I am hoping by the end of our meeting, I'll see more names being added. I'm going to share the, can one of my, one of the reps share the um, link to sign up. Just all you need to do is to put your name in the, in the Google sheet so that your space can be saved. Um, for the event, all right? So we're just gonna run the music a little bit more. We're gonna give him a little bit of time. And if not, we will just go ahead and end our session today. So let me just run back the tune again. Anybody have a special tune them want to play? And I'm gonna ask Selector John to go and run the Selector. So we want anybody have a song of their choice. And Abigail is going to be collecting the funds for the money pull-ups. So all who want the money pull-ups. So Janiel, any song, anybody has any song that they want to hear? Nobody? Oh, no boring night party. So come on, bring a little life to the party. Listen. I saw, you, I saw you had there, Jan, the, um, the popcorn. Yeah, we pray. Um, okay, yeah. please ensure that your selections they are clean of course. and you know how they like come up business. We're Listen. live on YouTube. <laughs> some cry, some smile, some fight every day. We rise to the top because we know what it takes. Through it all, we serve, yet still. Faith unchangeable, Lord unchangeable. 
Hey, no matter how the dollar might stack up, me still not change me, I go stay rough. You know the giddy and your offy buckle up your lace, be smart, don't be a cruff, no, no. Life it's a journey, it's a long race Mama says son be wise and don't bring disgrace So me take up the broom and start sweep the place Cause all these ways they got to get erased I love to me people that me embrace The truth are the truth and I can't erase So hell to all of those who want hate Just send me to finish this race So we ain't giving up No, no, no we giving up guys We put you Got to be ready, cause time's getting dreaded. I said, don't you worry. I'll be in a hurry, Lord. We got to be ready, cause time's getting dreaded. So we pray, we pray, we pray, we pray. Always pray, guys. Pray is important. Right, this So me tell the youth so long, then mama be strong. Taxi, I'll see it in that. Me no know about man. Hear that? Long time they might try to bring me down. And not just know from the very young. And not everybody. We don't love likes. We don't love likes. A lot of people don't love likes. I like that in every chat. We don't love likes. Do you hear it? Still be iron. Cause we don't love likes. No. So every time I watch, we do it for the love. We don't love with the likes. What's that dance? We don't do the likes because we like it. We do it because we love it. Success don't come over. Don't come over like, hey. We don't want substance over hype. So it seems that um, our last presenter will be coming. So we're just going to go ahead and um, close off tonight. But you're free to stay, enjoy the music, and let's have a little.